live. Hello, everyone. This is Joe Kirkner from the Animal Advocates of South Central PA with the Be Kind podcast. We're part of the Animal Advocates' mission to make a more compassionate world for all living creatures. Today, I am joined by Savannah, who is a 16-year-old member of the Animal Advocates who is actually extremely involved. Hi, Savannah. Hello. Um, so, as I hope you know by now, I'd like to just start out talking about random vegan stuff we've been doing. I've been pondering over a blog post I'm going to write, which coincidentally is something that Savannah does for the Animal Advocates, both writing blog posts and now she's part of the people overseeing them, correct? Yeah, that's correct. I just picked up that duty the other day. Just one of the many things you can do at the Animal Advocates that don't involve going out and shaking hands and holding babies and exposing yourself to the elements. So thank you so much for doing that. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? Well, just recently, some of you might have seen this, I wrote a blog about being a vegan teen, and I've been trying to get my Gold Award project approved. All, another thing is that our family, we've been getting a vegan bo a, a box of different vegetables delivered to our house every week, which is really cool. And is this is the Misfit box, correct? Yeah, that's a Misfit Fits box. We've gotten so many cool different items from the Misfits, such as black radishes and even a mini watermelon. I've never heard of either of those. That is really, really interesting. We were talking before this, and she told me that they're no longer accepting clients because now that everyone's stuck indoors, getting fruits and veggies delivered to your door seems awfully convenient. For sure. It's really nice. Are they really as weird shaped as they look in all the Facebook ads I see? So, there are some weird foods, but some of it's normal. Like, we got purple Brussels sprouts, which is, I guess, a little bit different from the green variety, but they taste the same. Kind of like green beans and carrots, I'm guessing. Yeah, we get some of those, too. And would you mind telling us why you went vegan or your vegan journey, if you will? So, it, it all started back when I was in fourth grade, and I went vegetarian for a, a week. So my aunt, and, well, my great aunt and great uncle... They gave uh, my sister a PETA kids magazine. They're not vegan, so they just like to give us stuff, and they thought this would be nice. So I read that, and I went vegetarian for a week. Then back in seventh grade, I started thinking about it again and decided to go pescatarian. And the year after that, when I was in eighth grade, for my New Year's resolution, I decided to go completely vegan uh, for ethics reasons. I just couldn't keep on um, helping people hurt the animals. So when you first started thinking about it, back when your grandparents gave you that cool PETA thing, what was your motivation at that point? Uh, well, when I was reading the magazine, it was talking about different how the different animals that were farmed for food suffer. I remember one of the specific images was of a lot of chickens crammed into a shed, and I just thought that I didn't want to support those industries anymore. So back then, it was also still for ethics, but being a fourth grader, I guess I just didn't have the capability to stick with my decision. And when you were younger, navigating all the school and relationships and friends and things like that, how did being vegan, pescatarian, even vegetarian play into that? Well, lots of people ask me about it, seeing as not everybody is a pescatarian or vegan. So I've had some really good conversations, and some people have even considered giving up certain products, like once during cross-country, since I ran a whole part of the race, a one boy gave up bacon for a whole month to help motivate me to keep on running. <laughs> I love it. That's a very practical way to go about things. So do you ever get picked on or anything like that? Uh, one, one student did not like that I would wear vegan shirts to school, but I don't really interact with him much anymore. But over, overwhelmingly, people have been really nice and supportive about it. Yeah, that's really cool. I think that's living proof that the world's become much more accepting of veganism and just alternative lifestyles in general. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Do you have any stories about where you maybe had to put yourself in awkward situations because of your values? Um, awkward situations. Sometimes uh, I'm talking to somebody about something and I don't want to straight up tell them that I'm vegan because people seem that that's a stereotype that people believe in. So sometimes there's kind of conversations where we're talking about food and then people will ask about it and 
but they're okay about it once I tell them. But sometimes it's a bit hard to navigate conversations about making me the stereotypical. I mention I'm vegan every five minutes. No one wants to be that person, and I think every vegan can relate to. I want to say it because it's very relevant, but should I? Because then I'll be that punchline of how do you tell someone's a vegan? Don't worry, they'll tell you joke. And I personally am incredibly impressed with how active you are with the animal advocates and your advocacy efforts there. And you shared with me before the podcast your favorite animal activist. Would you mind telling the listeners a little bit about that activist? Yeah, so my favorite animal activist is Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein. And for those of you who haven't heard of him before, he's the lead guitarist for the band uh, The Misfits. And he's been vegan, I believe, since 2013. So that's about seven years. And I know he's appeared in a couple different PETA ads, such as one where he makes some asparagus with another chef. And I really like him because the Misfits are one of my favorite bands. And if you looked at him, if a regular person looked at him, they probably wouldn't assume that he's vegan because he's about 50 and has huge muscles. So people always act surprised when I tell them that interesting trivia that he's actually vegan. So that's definitely a really good way to show people that vegans aren't just scrawny people with no muscles. I was researching him before this podcast and I thought it was really interesting and that's some of my favorite types of vegan activists or what I think is one of the most effective ways of vegan advocacy is not just the way he does which is the hyper masculine really buff uh, hardcore metal rocker but he's just a guy who's really awesome at what he does who happens to be vegan. He's not making veganism his sole thing, which is, I think, a great way for people to see, hey, this is a person who I really looked up to, and then you find out they're vegan, oh, well, that doesn't really change anything I thought before. Maybe this veganism thing is something to it. Yeah, that's definitely a great thing, when people see that their role models are doing something great, like going vegan. And you've also come out to several events. Would you mind sharing any experiences about that? Yeah, I know the most recent event was the the big veg fest that we had and i met someone else my age there that also regularly volunteers and just recently i asked him to go to the prom with me so it's really neat that while volunteering i can meet uh people my age that share my interests and core values and continue to connect with them and talk with them on a daily basis in the non-animal advocate sphere of people, do you find any other vegans or vegan-minded individuals your age? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of people at my school that are, I think, vegetarian or pescatarian, but last semester there was a girl that, a new girl that came to one of my classes and it turned out she was vegan. She recently had to go back to vegetarian because of her parents, but I thought it was really neat that there are, that veganism is becoming more prevalent in my school. Does your school have a lot of nice vegan lunch options in the cafeteria? Sadly, my school isn't great with that. I could get a peanut butter jelly every day, and occasionally there's a potato bar. But I know in middle school I ha- I wrote a letter about getting a veggie burger, but nothing came uh, about with that. But I am currently trying to create an animal advocacy club that will hopefully start a petition next year to get more vegan options on the menu. Well, if it's any consolation, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff when I was in high school. But once I got to college, then there was vegan stuff everywhere. That's actually one of the ways I went vegan was trying all the cool, weird vegan stuff in my college cafeteria. So if you plan on going to college, not that you have to, but if you plan on it, depending on the college, there might be many more vegan options. Yeah, all the colleges that I've been looking at have great vegan options, including vegan cheesecake at some of them. So I'm really excited about that. What? That's crazy. That, that's so decadent and extravagant. I love it. And what other ways has your vegan outlook on life played into your everyday interactions or thought processes in terms of maybe how you approach certain situations or purchase certain things? Most people, when they see a fly on the wall, they just ima- uh, automatically want to go kill it. But when, like in school, sometimes it'll be bugs. And I know once there was a cricket on the floor, so a teacher escorted me to a door so I could just let the cricket go outside. I really don't like killing any animal, no matter how small it, that it may be. That is awesome, and that really helps get rid of the gotcha thing with vegans a lot, where people say, well, do you kill spiders? And then if you do, they'll call you out. 
So that is a great way to make sure our ethics align throughout our entire spectrum of activities. So thank you very much, and I'm sure the grasshoppers thank you too. You recently wrote a blog post for the Animal Advocates. Do you want to tell the listeners a little bit about it and some of the things they could expect to see if they decide to read it? Basically, I went over interactions with my peers about my veganism. Most people just ask me questions, and I love answering people's questions. It helps them stay informed. I also talked about how parents, especially for people who are children or teens considering a switch to veganism, how it's imperative that your parents are supportive of it, and I understand that not everybody's parents will be. Thankfully, my parents were supportive in that. Veganism is just definitely a great way to connect with like-minded individuals. What ways have your parents been supportive on this journey? Well, back uh, when I in, in seventh grade, when I pe- when I went pescatarian, I actually wanted to go vegetarian. But at that moment, my parents didn't know enough about the lifestyle. But then when I, when I went to eighth grade, then they then they let me go vegan after they they did some more research about how to cook. And actually, my mom went vegan too along with me, so I thought that was really great. And now we almost exclusively eat vegan meals at home. I was going to ask if both your parents were vegan, but it sounds like your mother is at least. But how does your father, if he's not vegan, interact with you and your mother? My, my dad's also really supportive, and the only time that he really, really eats meat is some occasionally if we go out to a restaurant. But he, he definitely does a lot of cooking at home. Like one of my favorite dishes that he'll make is chana masala, which is a dish with chickpeas in it. So he's definitely super supportive. And my sister, she actually stopped eating pigs after we went to visit visit a pig sanctuary. So hopefully now we can go visit a cow and, and chicken sanctuary after this quarantine is over. Yeah, I think everyone's itching to get out and see all the animals and do all the things any day now. What is your take on the situation with the coronavirus, how it relates to animal exploitation. It's a very opinionated topic for vegans out there, both on social media and just in everyday conversations on the news. But from your perspective as a young person and a vegan, what's your take on the relationship between animals and COVID-19? Well, I think that I've heard that more people are adopting and rescuing dogs at certain shelters. So I think that that's a really good impact. And A lot of industries are going to be hurt by this, including industries that manufacture animal products. So I don't really know if that's going to be good overall, but at least in some areas that will be beneficial, I guess. And I think that people are donating money, especially since they know that sanctuary is needed. But I really hope that some people step up to the challenge and definitely try to help out sanctuaries and rescues. Yeah, that is one of the unexpected things from all this is that I keep reading stories about shelters being empty of all these cats and dogs. So that's very reassuring to see that people's compassion continues through with these challenging times. In terms of different media, whether it's books, songs, podcasts, what is something that really resonates with you and your veganism? I know a while back, um, I I used to, before, I think that, I don't think it exists anymore, but there used to be this thing called PETA 2, where teenagers and children could complete actions such as signing a petition, and then you could get points and buy stuff with the points. And I bought lots of cool stuff, including some vegan shirts, stickers, vegan jerky, even a recipe book, a college recipe book. I think you can buy that elsewhere, uh, buy PETA. And I actually made some recipes from it, and they were really good. So I think it's really cool that social media and technology is helping to influence activists, even the young ones all over the world. Great unifying force of the internet. So I got to ask, what's your favorite food? My favorite food? I got to go with honeydew melon. I just love honeydew melon. I am right there with you. Um, When honeydew melon is in season and you get it fresh and it's from a local farmer, it's so good. Though sometimes... I don't know how farming works, the crops or the sun or weather makes it all messed up and then you got to get out of season honeydew. It's not as good. So what's the secret to picking the best honeydew? Well, I don't pick the honeydew. Uh, my my parents usually pick it. So I'd say get someone who you know is a good picker to pick it for you. Now, what advice would you give to a young person thinking about trying veganism who may not have such a supportive network at home? Well, I would say is maybe you could try... Uh, easing your parents into the idea 
like maybe you could offer to cook dinner one night and then make a really cool vegan recipe or even just leave uh, the TV on in the background playing a vegan documentary or just even sit down and talk with them about it and do your research beforehand so you can tell them all of the health, environmental, and ethical benefits. And even if they say no, maybe they'll let you do meatless Mondays or something like that. I like it. Take what you can get and have an informed approach to it. Now, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I just really think that, especially in the time with COVID, we should all be doing our part and sharing stuff on social media. I know I've been sharing a few posts on my Instagram, but just make sure that you're doing some activism in some way just so that we can help get the message across. I hope that everybody's doing well. I'm very impressed that even though we can't go out there in person and be activists, you still took on the role of the blog post manager, which is something you can do from the comfort of your own home. So you're out there walking the walk as you're talking the talk. So thank you. I enjoy doing it. Right, well, if anyone wants to submit a blog post, how should they go about doing that? You can definitely reach out to one of our emails. I'm also doing it with another woman. So if you're on the Facebook page, uh, the organizers, I know I made a post in there. But if not, just comment on one of the posts in the the public page that you'd like to write a blog, and I'm sure that will let you do it. We have a list of topics that you can choose from, and you can choose one yourself. And don't worry, it's really not an intimidating experience. We love writers uh, from all different backgrounds. All right, now what's up next in Savannah's schedule in terms of anything, really? Anything. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I'm currently trying to work on my Gold Award project for Girl Scouts, and that's something comparable to the Eagle Scout Award for Boy Scouts. And I'm planning on helping a local dog rescue with their uh, trees and shrubbery. Uh, the local dog rescue is the, the Second Chance for Life Rescue Ranch, which is actually just a couple miles from my home. So I'm really excited to be starting on this project. Awesome. Well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's about it for today. Thank you all for listening. Yes, thank you all. And if you ever want to reach out to us, just comment on the public-facing page on one of the podcast posts or send an email to bekindpodcast at gmail.com, and we'll be more than happy to reach out to you. So have a fantastic day, and we hope you enjoyed. Bye.